You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. My Rock and More Cummings announced yesterday on Rachel Maddow's show that she is running for the congressional seat uh, vacated by her late husband, Congressman Elijah Cummings. She says she wants to continue the work that he started. Joining us right now on Roller Martin Unfiltered uh, is Dr. Maya Rockamore Cummings. My good to see you on the show. Uh, good to see you, Rowan. And certainly uh, our condolences uh, to you and the family uh, for the passing of Congressman Cummings. He was a great friend of this show, and so I always uh, enjoyed uh, chatting with him and spending time with uh, both of you. Uh, and so certainly uh, it ha has been uh, quite difficult the last few months for you and the family. Yes, it really has. Um, little, really, really a last few years uh, because, you know, he's had a number of uh, different health issues. But that being said, you know, I just appreciate all the love and sympathy that we receive from people all over the country uh, and certainly all over the world. And I certainly appreciate your condolences. So you um, you took some time. You said you were considering this uh, and you announced last night on Rachel Maddow that you were running for uh, his seat. Was this something that the two of you uh, discussed? Mm -hmm. We did have a conversation about six months ago um, where he was contemplating his future and he indicated that he thought that I should uh, take his place. Um, you know, so that is something that did come up uh, in our conversation. Mm -hmm. And obviously you were chair, uh, you've already resigned, but you were chair of the Maryland Democratic Party. Uh, and uh, you uh, also had a, a very brief period there, uh, had announced you were running for uh, governor in Maryland uh, on the Democratic side, and then you also bowed out as well. Uh, why, uh, why pursue uh, this position now? So remember that I bowed out of the governor's race because Elijah got sick, um, and I was his primary caregiver, uh, his supporter. Um, and so I had to step out of the arena to do my first duty, which was to take care of my family. Uh, and so in terms of the, uh, the Maryland Democratic Party, I had to avoid the appearance of any uh, impropriety or uh, any co conflict of interest. Uh, as you well know, the Maryland Democratic Party is actually responsible for the voter files. Um, and so, you know, I don't want anybody, I didn't want anybody to claim that, you know, in my role as party chair, I was somehow using it to my own advantage uh, or against any of my opponents. Uh, so it was incredibly important that I actually stepped down from that role, given that particular conflict. So now I'm running. I'm running for the Maryland 7th Congressional District position. Uh, and I'm going to run hard and I'm going to run well and prayerfully I'm going to win. This is obviously, um, it, 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 obviously, this is not the first time um, uh, spouses, members of Congress have actually run or even replaced them in the U.S. House or the United States Senate. Uh, what case will you make to the voters there in Baltimore uh, that you are the best person to follow in the footsteps of your late husband? Well, the fact of the matter is, as you well know, because uh, you have seen me over the years, is that I have been fighting. I'm not new to this. When Elijah met me in 1998, uh, I was already on the path of, you know, fighting for social justice, uh, working to strengthen the social safety net. Uh, working to make sure that health care was available to all. Uh, and I have a long track record of working on the federal level. You know, I, was, uh, I worked on the House uh, Ways and Means Committee, Social Security Subcommittee. I was Mr. Rangel's, uh, you know, chief of staff. Um, you know, I am not new uh, to the Hill. Uh, and I'm certainly not new to all of Congressman Cummings, the late Congressman Cummings' colleagues. I've testified on Capitol Hill on both the Senate side and the House side. I have a long track record of working across sectors to get things done. Uh, you know, I led Leadership for Healthy Communities, which was a program focused on helping states and counties, cities and counties uh, uh, provide healthier opportunities for children. I brought the 10,000 Small Businesses Goldman Sachs program here to Baltimore because I understand the importance of small businesses, particularly for people of color and women. Um, so I just, I have just done a lot and I roll up my sleeves and I get things done. And that is what I plan to do for the 7th Congressional District. Uh, obviously, it is going to be a crowded field already. Uh, former Congressman Kwasi Fume uh, has announced that he's also uh, seeking the position. Uh, and uh, there are a number of others who also say uh, they want uh, the seat as well. So uh, it is not going to be uh, an easy road for you. 
yeah, this is democracy. And this is what I, you know, I'm a political scientist, a PhD in political science. This is what democracy is about. People toss their hat into the ring and then they compete uh, to actually convince the public who can best represent them. And so, you know, I frankly, I welcome the competition. I welcome the opportunity for people to see what democracy is all about. Uh, that being said, you know, I do feel that I am the strongest candidate in the race and I will be making my case to the people and I hope to win. Um, one of the things that I found to be real interesting, and, and I'm all, it is always weird when I see these C folks talking. Um, uh, some folks saying that they, they felt, like even last night, that, that you were not showing grief. And, and, I, and that's, that's weird to me, because frankly, people grieve differently. It's also, it's not like uh, you've not been dealing with uh, his illness in the past six months. We've texted several times and uh, this was something that, that, that what was a battle for last half of the year. And so um, w what do you say to those folks who somehow believe that you should be grieving his death and not running for office? What do you say to them? I I, I tell them that they don't know Congressman Cummings because Congressman Cummings knew that, I mean, I fought right alongside of him. He expects me to continue the fight. Uh, and so the fact of the matter is, is that, uh, you know, I, you know, I, the, the, I am seeking to continue the legacy, but also to build on it uh, because this is about actually solving the problems that we face in the 7th Congressional District. It's about uh, addressing the challenges that we're facing as a nation. Uh, and again, I do feel that I'm the best person and best position uh, to address that. Earlier, you mentioned uh, your history in public policy. Um, first, for any, anybody who's watched uh, any of my shows, you've been a frequent panelist uh, on, uh, on my shows on TV One uh, as well. And so um, when, 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 you, when you look at that, do you also uh, want to make it clear to folks that uh, this is not the case where you've seen other cases of, of the widow of someone passing and then members of the people say, oh, uh, and they should go ahead and fill the term that, uh, that frankly, you, you were actually Maya Rockamore for a long time before you even started using his last name because it was about your own record. Because I, actually, I was very surprised, right. I was very surprised when, I, when, I, when I started seeing the last name because for the longest, uh, we never even used your last, uh, your married name on the show. That's exactly right. Um, I was determined to keep my identity until I found out that nobody at church knew who Dr. Rocky Moore was. <laughs> uh, they only knew me as Mrs. Cummings. Uh, they didn't know my track record, a uh, history of working on policy issues around the country at the federal level, the work that I've done at the state and local levels. They didn't know any of that. And so what I found is I had a split identity. Uh, people knew me as Dr. Rocky Moore through my DC focused work. Um, and then back at home in the district here in Baltimore, I was just Mrs. Cummings, so I had to bring my two identities together by actually um, making sure that I um, had Cummings on my, my name. Uh, well, it is uh, certainly go going to be uh, quite an interesting uh, race. We'll be watching it, and it certainly won't be the last time we talk. Before I let you go, uh, tomorrow at 1 p.m., there is going to be a rally in Annapolis uh, on behalf of the four HBCUs uh, trying to force Governor Larry Hogan to ante up. Uh, he's only offering $200 million when those HBCUs say they will settle for $577 million. Uh, your thoughts on what the governor and what the Maryland legislature should do to settle this lawsuit that's been going on for 13 years when they've already yeah. lost, uh, but they've, all, they've appealed. Right. I think the Black Caucus is doing the right thing. I think it's important to kind of raise the profile of this uh, matter. Um, it's been kind of bubbling underneath the surface and people, I don't think, really understand it. Uh, but the case is, you know, from, by the way, Elijah was a Howard grad. I'm a Prairie View a and University grad. We care about HBCUs here in the city of Baltimore. Coppin and Morgan are huge. Uh, you know, they produce our talent uh, in the region. And, and, he, and he, was on the board, he was on the drivers. board of Morgan State, correct? He's on the board of Morgan yeah. State. And so, you know, we, we're big HBCU supporters. And I, as a Maryland Democratic Party chair, uh, I came out uh, in support of a resolution uh, in favor of the HBCU. So um, I continue to support this issue. I think it's important what the Congressional Black Caucus is doing here in the state of Maryland. And I support them elevating this on the public profile. Um, I do think that Larry Hogan uh, should pay up. And I do think that the HBCUs deserve it. All right, Dr. Mind Rocky Moore Cummings, we appreciate it. Thanks so much. We'll be chatting further down the line.
Thanks for having me. Take uh, care. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right, folks, back to our whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Hey, folks, as the momentum around marijuana grows around the country, uh, the folks at MarijuanaStock.org have already reached more than half of their funding goal for their hemp CBD investment. That's right. If you want to take advantage of this great opportunity, you need to do it now because it won't last much longer. If you don't know, I'm talking about the hemp plant, the good cousin to marijuana, with a much higher concentration of CBD. That means hemp gives you all the medical benefits of marijuana without getting you high. Also, if you don't know, hemp farming is now legal in the United States, creating one of the largest commodities worldwide. Folks, it's an incredible investment opportunity, and that's where the folks at 420 Real Estate come in. Their business model is simple. They buy land that supports hemp CBD grow operations and lease it to high-paying tenants. That's right. They are hemp CBD landlords. And you can get in on the action. Of course, as hemp continues to change the economic landscape, 420 Real Estate is allowing you to chase the American dream. The best part is right now you can invest in this crowdfunding campaign for as little as 200 bucks. That's right, 200 bucks up to $10,000. Do, do it now before the fund is closed. To invest, go to MarijuanaStock.org. That's MarijuanaStock.org. Get in the game and get in the game now. Back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.